Hey everybody, Chris here from Behind the Slate, and today we look into more ProRes for Windows options. First things first, log on to your favorite search engine like Yandex and type in Avanti FFmpeg. The link you're looking for is Avanti FFmpeg AV Synth GUI. Next, click on the link. The new page that loads has quite a bit of information about Avanti. Feel free to read it. There's also instructions for Windows 7 users here. When you're ready to go, click on Avanti 075.7z. It's a small file, so it should only take a few seconds to download. Next, use your favorite unzipper to extract the files to your desktop. You should have the program file and a README text file. Access your Windows OS drive and copy the entire Avanti folder into the program files by 86 directory, even for Windows 64-bit users. Now we need FFmpeg. Head on over to ffmpeg.org and click on the downloads link at the top. Next, under Windows FFmpeg builds, click on the link for Zorano FFmpeg builds. This next step is important. Avanti will not work with 64-bit versions of FFmpeg, so make sure you download a 32-bit version. FFmpeg is also a small file and won't take long at all to download. When it's finished, extract the contents of the zip to your desktop. Open the program folder and you should see folders for bin, doc, licenses, and presets. Now open up the program files by 86 directory and navigate to your Avanti folder. I have two because I've done this already. Next, open the folder and copy the entire contents of the FFmpeg folder you downloaded to the FFmpeg directory in the Avanti program folder. Open the FFmpeg folder and make sure that bin successfully copied into the new directory. This is the FFmpeg executable. Now we can run Avanti, but we need to make a few modifications for it to work properly with Windows 7. Right-click the Avanti icon and select Properties. At the top, click the Compatibility tab and make sure that under Compatibility Mode, Windows XP SP3 is selected and the box is checked. Next, under Privilege Level, check Run This Program as an Administrator. Click Apply, then OK. Now we need to tell Avanti where FFmpeg is. Right-click the button that says Start Process and select Change Path to FFmpeg Executable. Select FFmpeg in the Avanti FFmpeg bin directory. Now Avanti and FFmpeg can talk to each other. Don't mind this error on the bottom of the command line readout. It won't affect ProRes. In the destination codec, codec settings, you'll notice that there is no ProRes option yet. We have to manually add it to the template. Click in the box and type ProRes. The next window that pops up is a template window. Under select desired codec, click the drop down arrow. There are five flavors of ProRes coders for FFmpeg, but for this example, choose the vanilla ProRes option. Next, under Enter File Extension, type MOV in lowercase letters. This will distinguish your encoded ProRes files from your DSLR stock files, which use capital MOV. Next, select Update Entry and Exit, and then click the Yes button. Now we can add a source video file. I'll select some Canon 60D video from a prior BTS episode. By default, Avanti will place the ProRes file in with the source file, so change the output directory to somewhere you can remember. You can change the encoder to match the four different flavors of what ProRes offers by using a simple command, the dash profile colon v command. This command uses numbers from 0 to 3, which correspond to the different ProRes encoding options. 0 is the proxy option, 1 is LT, 2 is vanilla ProRes, and 3 is high quality or HQ. For this example, I'll encode with the Vanilla ProRes option 2. Next, for the audio option, select Copy Audio. You're ready to go. Click Start Process. Avanti is pretty fast, and on multi-core rigs, it should complete in no time at all. All done. Go ahead and view your transcoded video and make sure it came out right. The file size should be massive compared to the source file. Go ahead and play your video. Avanti can also do batch jobs using the Job Control Manager. It's a button that says 1, 2, 3 on it. Once the manager window opens up, right-click in the listing box and choose Add Media Files. Select all the files you want to transcode and press Open. You'll notice that there is no destination for the files yet. You need to add it manually. Press the button in the top menu that has a triangle folder, then choose your output directory. I'll choose a ProRes folder I made earlier to put my transcoded files in. Your batch file settings are determined by the main window settings. You'll want to set everything here first, then add the batch jobs. We already set this up prior to the batch job, so I won't change anything here. However, before processing the batch list, make any changes here first if you need to. 
When everything is set, press Process Jobs. You need to save the job list first. For this example, just press OK and save. This box warns you that the new ProS files will overwrite your source file if you don't choose a different destination folder. We already did, so press Yes. The Job Control Manager will now begin to transcode the listing. Unlike another GUI, Avanti goes down the list one by one. In systems with a hexa-core or higher CPUs, this will slow things down just a little bit, but quad-core chips will find little difference with encoding times versus another GUI. The Job Manager window also has a nifty labeling system during the batch process. Green shows a file that is done, yellow shows a file in progress, and gray shows a job hasn't begun yet. Now how to get those pesky Mark III raw files to play nice with Windows and OS X. Once you convert the raw image files over to DNG, open up a program that can process the DNG image sequence. I'll use After Effects CS6. Open the Mark III DNG image files and import them into your program. I'm not going to grade the footage for this example, but if you want to, do that now. This next step is very important. Right-click the sequence and choose Interpret Footage, then Main. You need to change the frame rate from 30 FPS to 23.976, which is the FPS that was used during the shoot. Then click OK. You're ready to add the image sequence to the render queue. Your intermediary codec should be something that is easy for Avanti to understand and also something that keeps as much data intact as possible. Choose QuickTime, and under Format Options, choose the uncompressed YUV 10-bit 422 codec. Click OK, then choose your destination path. After that, click Render. Rendering raw data into another codec is CPU and RAM intensive work. This machine has a 6 to 1 ratio, which means one minute of raw footage takes 6 minutes to render to an uncompressed codec. As you can see, having lots of RAM for your converter can really speed things up. Ah, oh, finally done. That took forever. Now we can take a high-quality copy of the raw footage and convert to a nice ProRes 10-bit 42 codec to edit with. Load your uncompressed copy into Avanti and change the destination path accordingly. I'm just going to change the file name. Now change the profile to the high-quality option by replacing the 2 with a 3. Oh, and I also don't need audio for this file since there was no audio recorded. Then go ahead and start process. Now the Mark III RAW files are a neatly compressed, high-quality intermediary codec for editing on a Windows or Mac machine.